Hey, what's going on guys? Brian here, Brian's Law Maintenance. Hope you guys are doing well. Hey, it's Tuesday afternoon, shooting this video real time. Here's what we got going on today. We talked to you guys um, about heat stress, drought stress, and the lawns are just kind of slowing down, burning up. Uh, in the meantime, I got a couple sticker swaps I'm sending out. Actually, probably like number 30, 31, 32 for you guys. Uh, so many of you have been uh, asking for stickers. Appreciate the sticker swaps and sending them back and forth. I wanted to just talk about uh, heat stress and drought stress. The lawns are freaking toasty as heck. I'm looking at my uh, apartment complex here. They have the water on and it's still really, really dry. Uh, but I don't, I do know like around the Midwest and a lot of uh, the East Coast and even down South, you guys are just dealing with super dry lawns. You're having to skip lawns, go bi-weekly every three weeks. It's just cutting into the revenue. Uh, it stinks. You guys are taking days off, weeks off, trying to figure out what to do with paying your guys. I want to talk about some of those quick helpful tips for a few minutes. Um, in the meantime, wanted to say a big congrats to Luca who won the Steel FS 111RX, I think it is, uh, trimmer giveaway from Darwin's Grip. Uh, he was actually the lucky winner of that giveaway and that grill video, so that was really exciting. In fact, I uh, wanted to mention this really quick. Uh, we did pick up a new grill based on all of your guys' suggestions. So if you guys got two seconds, stick with me. The most suggested grills in the comments were, of course, Weber, Charbroil, uh, the Green Egg. Uh, some other ones were like Blackstone, if I'm not mistaken, and then Traeger. So we thought about it long and hard. We did a bunch of research and called a couple of you guys that I actually know have Traegers, like B&B Lawn Care and a couple other friends. And we went with the Ironwood 885. Uh, this thing was a little expensive, it was like 1800 bucks. Um, but you know what, this is going to be something we can take uh, to the future house, we can grill uh, with it here for the next year or so and uh, take it to the future uh, you know, outdoor living space and patio. So it's actually pretty cool. The reason we went with the 885 compared to the one that's like a model below it for $200 less is you get twice the space. You know, So if you're having a bigger family one day or having people come on over, at least you got more room to grill, uh, or I should say smoke. So this is a smoker, not a grill, but of course you can still grill burgers and steaks on it You know, with the smoker. It takes about an hour to do a, a good steak and uh, about 15 or so minutes for a burger, plus or minus. And we're still learning, obviously, as we go. Uh, we did get the all the little utensils and the little uh, pellets and all that other mess. We got this at Home Depot. It was like, like I said, about 1800 bucks, but overall, uh, Liz has already made uh, some steaks with it. She's already made a killer rack of ribs yesterday that came out amazing. So thank you to all of you guys that suggested the Traeger uh, with the grill option for us to go with. Now, a lot of you guys also mentioned to get a Weber grill or a nice grill like that that we can include in an outdoor living space and patio. I'm not gonna actually build an outdoor kitchen on the future backyard. We actually have a grill setup that's gonna be part of the uh, outdoor kind of like step off area that's already kind of built into the house. So after reading all the comments, uh, it did make sense to get like a nicer grill, uh, but at the same point, I don't think we had to buy one now because we're gonna get something installed part of the outdoor patio and house anyway. Uh, so I think what we wanted to go with was a smoker for now and then we'll have that outdoor grill later, if that makes sense. So anyway, we're figuring it out just like all of you guys. All right, so here, let's do this really quick. We're gonna run to the post office. I gotta drop off some sticker swaps, go get some mail from there, and then let's talk about some things you guys can do to stay productive, make some money with the lawn still being all dried out from all the heat stress. All right, guys, well, it's a couple minutes later over here at the post office, just picking up some mail, some checks from some commercial businesses, which is great. Uh, gotta love commercial when they pull through, as always. Uh, just kidding, right? Sometimes it takes a couple months to get your checks in the mail. Actually, I still have about seven grand owed to me from spring cleanups, mulch, and all that other stuff, and it's almost July here. So people always ask me, why do I always have uh, some residential and commercial? Why am I not all one or the other? And the simple answer is, well, I like my cash flow. We just did our end of month billing here. We had like 12, 13 grand for our weekly uh, or our monthly lawn maintenance for our residentials and then commercial we have like another 15 18 grand coming which is just ridiculous um it's just funny how that works by the way i have a little bit of a flu right now i don't know if you guys can tell so i do apologize on the video if it's kind of showing through but really quick uh some helpful tips for heat stress and if the lawns are drying out uh if you guys want to leave some comments down below as well love to hear what you guys are doing to combat this as well uh, i was saying earlier in the video it seems like every couple years uh, even every other year, but every couple years, uh, we just deal with super dry conditions, a lot of drought, uh, a lot of 
well, not a lot of rain, right? To be honest with you. And so we're skipping lawns. Um, we're, we're having to skip whole weeks of revenue, which is awful. And I always say, try to get the irrigated lawns, the irrigated subdivision type of customers. But I'll tell you what, like, I don't know if that advice is going to be dated a little bit because I think the only real answer is get super wealthy clients at this point, because with, with gas prices, the way they are, uh, the economy being the way it is, um, it's kind of wild right now. Like everybody's kind of letting their lawn go. Not everybody, but even the subdivisions that we're in are nicer homes, nicer subdivisions. They get uh, fertilization regularly, right? Uh, even a lot of those folks are letting their lawns go. Or they haven't started up their irrigation just yet, or uh, they haven't cranked the water up to make the lawn as green as possible. So. My point is they're scaling back too. And you can see it. You can see it all across the whole town, the whole city where I'm at. Um, not everybody has their irrigation on. Not everybody has it cranked up. Um, I think people are just feeling it in the pocketbook with inflation, fuel prices, whatever, 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 right? So um, here's what I can say is try to supplement with extra work that you can be doing when the lawns aren't growing as much. And so for a lot of us, that's probably going to be landscaping work. So this might be a great time to tag up those three, four, five yard mulch jobs for some of those customers that you might've put on the back burner, maybe do some mid season pruning for a couple different plants and maybe for the shrubs for the uh, clients. Um, you know, you can do a great pruning drop uh, job and shrub pruning job for 400 bucks, 700 bucks, 1100 bucks, and that can be a day's worth of revenue in four or five hours, right? In addition to that, here's a quick one. Um, maybe try to enjoy a little bit of the downtime as well. Maybe take some family time, go on a quick camping trip, maybe uh, take a quick cheap vacation. Of course, the last thing you wanna do is spend some money when no money's coming in. I'm super cognizant of that. But you know what? We always say like, when do we get vacation or when do we get some time off? Well, this might be a great opportunity to do it where you can take a three or four day vacation, do it on the cheap, go camping, take the camper, or you know, go rent a campsite for you know 150 bucks and you're off to the races. So um, that's what I got just for some quick helpful tips for you guys. What do you guys have out there that you guys do when the lawns are dried out, there's heat stress, Dress, nobody's watering and the lawns aren't growing very fast trust me I feel you guys when you lose entire weeks of revenue um, I've been there for a long time I used to have a whole bunch of trailer park customers and after about mid-June of course well nobody watered in there anyway but all those lawns would be toasted and we would go from mowing four times a week or four times a month to mowing once a month and sometimes skipping for four weeks five weeks at a time so I knew I had to get out of there to into those nicer subdivisions but even being in the nicer subdivisions I'm still noticing that same trend uh, where not everybody is watering just yet all right so my quick tip is try to hedge a little bit get into the nicer subdivisions that water but Tell you what, I don't even know it these days, right? With the uh, inflation and gas prices the way they are, people got to cut back and you know what? Their water bill is the first one to go, right? All right, guys. Well, just a quick fun video for you guys today. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, I'm trying to get over this little head cold that I have, but wanted to get some videos out to you guys at least nonetheless. And uh, hope you guys are off to a great start of the week. All right, happy Independence Day. Happy belated Independence Day to all of you guys. And we'll catch up with you here on the next one.